The drama began shortly after the Frederick Police Department received a call from Nicole Atkinson, the best friend of Shannon Watts. She had arranged to drive Shannon into town that same day for a pregnancy checkup, but there was no answer when she knocked at the door, nor any response to her text messages or phone calls. After noticing her shoes were still at the front door, she became concerned and called 911. Okay, you Nicole? Think there is yes. Okay. What's going on? So, my friend, um, we were out of town for a business trip this weekend. All right. And I dropped her off at 2 o'clock this morning. She's 15 weeks pregnant. She wasn't feeling well. And she had a doctor's appointment this morning at 9. And I told her to let me know if she needed me to take her. She's got two little girls. I've called. I've texted. Chat. Fucking chill, dude. Fucking chill, bro. I, we're watching this one. I've decided. I know it's three parts. I understand that it's long. Okay? I don't care. Like, just please calm down. Okay? Please. Like, I'm begging you. Just fucking Gosh, cool it. Just get your popcorn. Get, get under the goddamn covers. Whatever the fuck you want to do. And just watch, okay? Oh my lord, dude. Y you're... Like, we will watch all of these in, in uh, due time, okay? Fuck me. Just calm down. Just snuggle in, okay? Cool it. Did. Her car's in the garage, her shoes she wears every single day right in the front door. Is there TOS in any of these videos? No, right? Is there TOS in this? How you doing? You seen your neighbors today? No? Okay. What's Chris's phone number? Chris's phone number is... Hey Chris, Officer Coonrod for the police department. Pretty good. So, do you have any idea where your wife is? Right. What my concern is her car's here. They're saying she is diabetic. I don't want her if she's upstairs and can't respond. Okay. About how far out are you? Okay. All right. He said like five minutes. It's not a sure sign of guilty conduct, yet the fact that Chris made the officer wait for his return would have most likely alerted some minor suspicion. In normal circumstances, a husband receiving a call from the police saying they were concerned about the safety of their pregnant wife and children, in most cases, would have given them permission to immediately kick the door down. It's a truly somber awareness to know that the man stepping out of the car had only a very short time ago dumped his infant daughter's bodies into an oil tank and buried his pregnant wife in a shallow grave. Oh my god, I remember the story. Grave. I literally remember the story. Scott, how you doing? How's it going? So this is the only vehicle she would have? Only one that, yeah. She would drive? Okay. The familiar routine for anyone checking for someone's presence inside a house, whether it be an emergency or otherwise, is to immediately call out to them for instantaneous reassurance. Chris remains silent, but instead feels the need to examine his wife's car before subtly sneaking through the internal garage door. He then disappears for one minute and seven seconds before letting the neighbors and police officer inside. Only Chris will know what he carried out during that time period, but it's safe to assume that his curious behavior was not going unnoticed, made evident by the unsettled gaze of Nicole as he opens the door. Matter of fact, come in, Chris. There were multiple key moments oh my captured God, from the I fucking neighbor is like, bro, the neighbor is literally just like, Inside the house, which may not have been noticed immediately by the officer, but would have no she doubt knows. been gathered by forensics upon further investigation. The most overt peculiarity was Chris's interaction with his phone. The guise of his thumb movement would have given the impression he was texting someone, which would have seemed very peculiar, as the normal response would be to frantically call people rather than text given the circumstances. Hindsight gives us a clearer picture of Chris's introversion, which is that he was most likely using his phone to avoid eye contact and progress of dialogue with the officer. What time do you leave the day? What time do I leave there? Come no, here. here. Uh, usually between 5.30 and 6. Alright. And was Shannon here then? Yes. Dude, this is nuts, dude. This guy's a Does fucking... Does she usually watch the kids or do you have daycare watch no, them? No, she, she usually watch the kids if they're not at school. Okay. You guys have any kind of issues? Marital issues or...? We're separation. You are? And how's that going? Uh, it's, it's going civil for the most civil, part or? <laughs> Dude, when you fucking realize that he, he just like murdered his family. Additionally, we are presented with the subtle cues of Chris's forethought cover story, being that his wife simply ran off the with the kids after a breakdown us. in the marriage. All the girls blankies are gone. Um, 
if they sleep with it, they don't leave anywhere without them. Okay. The rest of Chris's conduct could be analyzed and dissected in various ways, and it would be easy to pick at certain oddities in body language and link them with signs of guilt. Yet, without the hindsight we have now, his behavior could just as easily be linked with an innocent man who is understandably concerned and frantic over the disappearance of his family. His very conservant neighbor, however, had the perceptual advantage of knowing Chris on a semi-personal level, and could analyze his kinesics in a far more accurate manner than the police officer. You just want to go talk to him, I'm going to get his info real quick. No. Oh my god. Oh my god. Right. To be completely honest with you, my wife and I were kind of wondering when she was on vacation if something happened because I've heard them full out screaming at each other at the top of their lungs and he gets crazy. Does he? Oh, oh dude. Recently. He doesn't look worried. He looks like he's trying to cover his tracks. He's normally quiet, real subdued. He's over here telling the, telling you three Yo, times. Yo, fucking dude, Fred Durst, literally. Fred Durst, Andy, straight up being a hero here, okay? I mean, look, dude, what the fuck? He's just, he's got all the tea, dude. What the sauce, out, too. What he did, what he did, what he did. He's very, he's very he never talks. So the fact that he's over here blabbing his mouth makes me kind of suspicious. This was just after the moment he had shown both Chris and the officer. That's Detective Durst to you, Chatters. That's Detective Durst to you, Chatters. God damn, this is all before Among Us came out, too. Officer, his surveillance footage of that same morning, capturing only Chris leaving the house after loading multiple unidentified things into his truck. Yeah, we can Although not fully incriminating, as Shannon and the kids could have left through the back entrance, this was an extremely detrimental piece of evidence, and would have no doubt been extolled by forensics and made Chris an immediate prime suspect. The following day, Chris, for some bizarre reason, agreed to be interviewed by two separate news stations, where he came across as extremely unimpassioned and detached from the alarming nature of the situation. Like, when I got home yesterday, it was like a ghost town. Like, she wasn't here. The kids weren't here. I have no idea like where they went. Right now it's got yeah, K9 units, the sheriff's department. Everybody's like they're they're doing their best right now to figure out like if they can get a scent. If she wasn't here, like where did she go? Like once I got here, it was like, all right, who can I call? I called her three times, texted her about three times just to say, you know, what's going on? Like if she's vanished, like I want her back so bad. I want those kids back so bad. Right now I don't even want to just like throw anything out there like I hope that she's somewhere safe right now and with the kids. Last night, I wanted, I, I wanted that knock on the door. I wanted to see that. I wanted to oh see my this running, fucking running, God, just, just dude. Barrel rush me and just give me a hug and knock me on the ground. That's why last night was just horrible. I couldn't do it. I just, I'm hoping that somebody sees something or somebody knows something and comes forward. Shannon, Bella, Celeste, if you're out there, just, just, just come back. Like, if somebody oh! has her, just Oh, the fucking look back at the camera, it makes it so much I worse. I need to see everybody. I need to see everybody again. This house is not complete with without anybody here. Oh, he's so bad at lying. Oh my fucking God, dude. This is like, you don't need to be an Among Us expert to, to figure out that this dude is sussy as fuck, dude. He is such a sussy little baka right now. Holy shit, dude. Please bring him back. This could have been construed as shock trauma, where a person will turn numb and retreat into themselves as a means of escape. Yet the viewers watching this live from home were probably thinking what we as the retrospective audience already know. He was called in for questioning four hours later. Somebody knows where these kids are. And I keep saying, kids, I'm sorry, kids in your life. I know you're going through a lot, so I'm not going to keep you here all night. Just tell me 
exactly what you remember, and I'll take notes about where we can go. Okay. So this 148 AM. Let me switch chairs. Okay. Yeah, when they come knocking. One of the oldest and most commonly used techniques is for the interrogator to sit between the door and the suspect. This is for the purpose of heightening the feelings of isolation and dependence. It's an indirect subliminal message, letting Chris know that the only way out of that room is through the detective. It's an excellent tool for stripping away confidence, thus increasing the telling signs and body language when information is fabricated. Uh Another technique that they use in this situation is warn you that the top of the hour is here. So there's a 60 second ad break. So the way to avoid those ad breaks is you already probably know, cause I have uh, warned you about this multiple times is to subscribe. You can do that for $5 or you could do that with a free Twitch prime uh, by using your Twitch prime. You get one free subscription a month and uh, you can use it on your favorite streamer broadcaster and uh, have a the most fire segues basically uh, right before an ad break i mean literally the most fire segues just get at me uh probably won't be able to figure out next time i just ruined i just ruined like 58,000 people's brains they are going to be looking at the fucking top of the hour now to see where the ad breaks are uh, here's the ad now oh god that was so good i'm sorry That was so good, dude. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow, dude. That was such a fucking solid segue. Look, this is how you have the wherewithal and the knowledge of like when the hours are, are flipping, okay? Yeah, let's keep going. 4 a.m. That's when my alarm goes off for work. And I'm seeing just get dressed, brush my teeth, everything I do upstairs. Okay. About four fifteen, that's when I get back slide right into bed next to her and start having a conversation with her about having the house putting the house up for sale and talking about it. Except like actually going proceeding with the separation. Okay. And obviously it gets pretty emotional, like we're talking about, you know, like we felt this the disconnection was there, like falling out of love and trying to stay together, maybe just for the kids' sake, but we're realizing that doing like our homework it's not most of the time that's not going to work yeah so that's when i got home i opened the garage door and we went inside the house and looked everywhere shenan bella and celeste nowhere to be found shenan's wedding rings on her nightstand her phone's still on the couch her purse is still there the medicine for the kids is still there the car and the car seat is still there and there's no sign of them anywhere okay I was just hoping that, I mean, left all the lights on in the house, I was hoping that I'd get a knock on the door. But yeah, nothing back. happened. Yeah, but nothing happened. What do you think happened? At first, I really thought maybe she was just at somebody's house, just yeah. decompressing. Just going on scene. Yeah. But after today, like with the onslaught of all the cars, I mean, all the police cars, all the news, all the canine units, it's making me lean the other direction about someone took her. Okay. But it's just, if someone took her, it would have to have been someone she knew. Because there's, there's no sign of anything like being Okay, dude, or, when you're trying to fucking solve the criminal case yourself, like, you might as well, that's a, you're venting, dude. You're just straight up venting all over the fucking place. Like, he's literally, he's like, you know, oh, there was no sign of trauma, no sign of, like, disturbed patterns anywhere like that. It's like, why are you thinking about these things, dude? Your wife and children are gone. You don't even know where the fuck they're at. And you're like over explaining shit. But like, that's the way I'm leaning now. At first I thought for real, she was just decompressing somewhere. Just, I mean, I thought she was safe. Mm -hmm. Even though everything in the house was left there. But now it's just after the day with the news crews and everything, it's just, it feels more the other direction. And it's freaking me out. I would be detectiving oh, if my wife was missing. No, you'd be fucking down. hysterical if you love your wife or you, at least your fucking children like a normal person would. You'd be fucking hysterical. You'd be like, where the fuck is my wife? Like, what the fuck is going on? Not like, oh, oh I guess they took the... Key. I guess she left her ring here and also took the blankies. Like, 
morning, early that morning, mm -hmm. I told her like the disconnection is it's there, like it's not going away. Like the connection we had when in the beginning, mm -hmm. it's not there anymore. It's, not, it's yeah. like I don't feel like the love we have is there anymore. Okay. And it's just like I don't feel Look like at the cop! The cop's literally like, Why are you telling me all this? This is probably when the cop was like, yo, this motherfucker is guilty, dog. Look at him. He's just sitting there and like, literally, it's just like, he's just sitting there going, okay, uh, uh, all right, cool. Uh, what else? All right, uh, you fucking killed her. Like, you, you, you did. Like, I mean, if we want to stay together for the kids, I'm not sure if that's going to work. Mm -hmm. Like, bring us what you told him. Yes. Okay. Like, having another baby bring us in this relationship, do you think this is going to work? Mm -hmm with us being together, or separation, I think is going to be the best possible route for us. And that's when like all the crying and everything proceeded. And it was just- it was Oh, OC, there's no lawyers online right now. You want to just go to a, you want to proceed to a bench trial. Very hard just, just to talk, talk about that. Mm -hmm. But I needed to do it face to face. Okay. And I needed like, I needed to see her face like while I did it. I couldn't uh, text, phone, whatever. I needed to be face to face and be able to see her and know that she was going to be at least reciprocating back to me. Oh, what did she say? She said that it was, I mean, it was, she wants, she wanted to kind of work on it, mm -hmm. but if that's the way I was feeling, then she respects that. Okay. Uh, 1 p.m. I'm now on my way home to check on my family. Uh, is that just because you're worried with, based on the conversation yeah. with Nicole? Had the police contact you by then? No. Okay. She, but, I arrived, or sorry, go ahead. But uh, Nicole says she was probably going to call the cops. Okay. All right. Now, so it sounds like Nicole's pretty worried. Mm -hmm. More worried than you. Well, so I, I, once, once she couldn't get anything out of her and nothing was going on at the house, I was like, all right, I got to go home. The sharp and sudden change of angle from baseline questioning to direct confrontation would normally make an innocent person refute or at least challenge the statement. There would also be a brief pause, as they would need time to process the allegation due to its perplexity. A guilty individual would already be in a defensive state of mind, and would normally respond in a hastily modus. Instead of refuting the remark, they would accept it, but try and explain its actuality in a defensive manner. But it sounds like Nicole was more worried. Yeah, because like most of like if she hasn't texted me, like I understand that. Okay. Like sometimes that happens. Okay. But for her not to get back to her okay. group, direct sales group, okay. that was very unorthodox. Okay. So then they're they're at home. Um, police officers there. Mm -hmm. Bro, this they is like. Do that. So as we go through the house, we're all. Do you immediately go through the house? Like, I open the this is how you don't operate when uh, your wife is potentially dead with your or ran away with your kids. Like every single thing he's done thus far is the exact opposite of what like every normal human being would react to. He, he's just like he's like nervous, but not nervous in the same sense that like, oh my god, where's my wife and children? I mean, even if you fucking hate your, like, uh, wife, then at least your children and your pregnant wife. So, like, the baby. But, you know, nervous, not in this, but he doesn't seem like he's fucking nervous about the situation at all. He seems like he's nervous about being caught. Garage door, and I just, I just go into the house. I'm, I'm, I'm looking. Like, I just go in the garage door, and I'm looking. Is the police officer saying, hey, let me talk to you for a minute? No. No, okay. What's, no. The, what's the vibe like? I just, I just, I go up there, shake his hand, but I'm like opening the garage door at the same time. Okay. And then I go through and then they're waiting at the front door. I go in, open that up, and then they come in. Oh, so they didn't go in the garage door with you? Okay. Well, they, they went in the garage. They didn't come in the way I did. All right. So then they, everybody goes in. I think that was at, and at four o'clock, that's when, um, because the neighbor, cause the neighbor yeah, was the officer, I went over to the neighbor's house to see if he saw anything. And who's that neighbor's at? I think it was the officer. Cause okay. He just went over there. Um, okay. And then that's when the uh, neighbor called him back over to show him he, uh, he had some stuff from the other night. Okay. Just show him like whatever he had that, that put motion on it. Okay. 4 p.m. Police check neighbor security footage and question them as well. Okay. Have we talked about that? Is that where we're, we're, okay. where we're at? Uh, anything else about that? No, I mean, it just shows 
Nicole dropping her off, but her not walking up, and it shows me loading my truck up about the time that I told you I left. Okay. The fuck are um, you looking at, bro? Can we talk about something that's kind of hard to talk about. Um, so when I work investigations like this, I have to keep an open mind on everything. Okay. And part of keeping an open mind is listening to you talk about your wife and your marriage. And the day she goes missing is the day that you guys have marital discord. Okay. So you can understand uh, what I'm thinking about you. Yeah. Uh oh. What do you think about that? Uh, it makes me sick to my stomach, honestly. Like, I know, like, I've talked to a few of my friends, it's like, you know, this does not look good on you. I'm like, I know. Okay. It's like, people that, if people knew that we were having marital issues, they're going to look at me especially with the way everything looks. And it honestly just makes me sick to my stomach because this is something that I would never do. Ever. Oh my God. I, I know like you have to look at every, every vantage point. This is something I would never do to my kids or my wife. When you spent all your points on crafting and, uh, and, and I guess strength and non on charisma, dude, he just fucking perception check failed. Our perception, he absolutely fucking failed that. He Same rolled so low on this. At all. This is what is known as the pause technique. After the suspect answers a question, the interrogator will remain silent while maintaining eye contact. This physical demeanor gives off the subtle cue that he expects more that's information to be divulged persuasion. and may already know more than the suspect realizes. A deceptive person will usually drop their eyes, change posture, or break the silence. I'm not sure, like, what I could do, like, to make people believe that just because if they if they knew we were having marital discord, they would all automatically look at me. But there's no, I would harm anybody in my family. At all. Oh my we god, it's so... And we had that conversation that Bro, morning. this guy literally is like, I'm just gonna not talk ever again because... Easy. You're just doing all the talking for me. He's just like, do, you're doing my job for me. I'm just going to fucking not say anything. Go and off. Then she goes. Mm, Ice cold, dude. He no fucking, he is. iced him. Or He's in the is. cooler. I promise you that no, no, I had nothing to do with any of that. Are you telling me the truth? I'm telling you the absolute truth. Why should I believe you? A truthful individual will normally respond to this question with a question, such as, why are you asking me that? Or, what's going on here? They will often protest the aggressive nature of the Inquisition, or give I'm a getting, short and forceful response. Dude, I'm getting anxious, secondhand anxiety from watching this dude. Like, I can't stop biting my nails, dude. I'm losing it. Response. It is so I'm fucking... Very trustworthy person, and the people that do know me, they know how I'm a calm person. I am not an argumentative person. I am a person who is that's never going to be abusive or physical in any kind of relationship. I would never harm my kids. I would never harm my wife. What? Why are you saying you these? Me, I mean, a good thing that he is saying these things, but like, fucking holy shit. They know me. They know I'm a low-key guy that's quiet. I'm, I'm not about confrontation. I'm not I would never murder my pregnant wife, two children, and then dump their bodies into a plastic vat with acid. I would never do such an oddly specific thing that I'm talking about right now, which I suspect is something that could have happened, but definitely not by me uh, and probably by someone else uh, because I uh, fell in love with a, uh, with a woman uh, or, or something like that. I mean, that would be crazy if I were to do that, but of course I would never do that. Oh my fucking God, dude. Is this like... This is literally like one step below just doing that. About anything that elevates to that level. I mean, you can like if someone like yells at me, screams at me, I just take it and I just try to get it by the wayside and get it back to where it's cool. Like, 
just a cool conversation to where like none of that none of that gets to that height. Thanks for the I am not that person. I've never been that person. I am not about that man who was about that. Literally. What you had? I have to pee so bad I can't. Oh, it's over. It's over, dude. The moment that you explain, the moment that you over explain something for 60 seconds, you might as well just be like, dude, fuck it. Arrest me, dude. Here. Here you go, motherfucker. Put the fucking handcuffs on. It's over. It's a wrap, dude. It's a fucking wrap, dude. You might as well. You might as well be like, I did it. Fuck it. Just. Okay. Would you take a polygraph? Sure. Take a little break. I'm gonna come back in here because I have a lot more questions for you. Like, if you fucking, uh, if you're a normal human being who's not a fucking uh, bloodthirsty murderer, and a police officer says, it kind of looks like you might have, you know, it looks bad for you. You might have murdered your wife. You go, are you fucking kidding me? Why my wife and children are fucking missing, and you're gonna fucking sit here and tell me? I, I, I murdered them? What are you, out of your fucking mind, dude? Go do your goddamn job as a cop, okay? Go do your fucking job. That's what a normal oh, person would uh, act like in that situation. Not, oh, I would never do a murder because I am not a mur- I mean, uh, you know what this reminds me of? You know what just reminded me of? This reminds me of that fucking pedo dude who was Jeffrey Epstein's best friend from the royal family. You guys remember when he was like, well, you know, everyone was saying that, uh, you know, a pedophile can sweat, but I, of course, have never sweat before because, uh, I lost my capability of, uh, sweating in the Falkland Wars, so, uh, you know, it's, it's great. Prince Andrew! That's what he's doing! Like, it's literally like fucking Prince Andrew being like, Well, of course, I do declare it's impossible for me to do pedophilia because I was not wearing my pedophile shirt at the day, uh, in the moment that they were saying, uh, that I was doing the pedophilia. God damn, dude. Straight up. Same shit. Same fucking energy, dude. God damn. Yeah, my inability to sweat renders me useless in a situation where I'm doing pedophilic acts. You know. Oh my god. How you feeling? Look at that picture. That wasn't nice, Dad. Has mullets. Celeste, she's rampage. She's always the one that's she's gung ho. She's always the one that's just like she's off. She's either go or she's asleep. Nice. She's always one growling. She's she's always been. She's a tiger. Bella, she's the calm, the mothering one. She's the one that's always. You okay? You okay? You fine? Okay. She's just, she's just the sweetest little girl. She's the one that favors me more, and Celeste is the one that favors Sinan more. Nice hand, Pogo. I remember when they wore that dress. She just wore that dress not too long ago. Love you, Wait, what did happen? What happened? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What did he do? She's just, she's just the sweetest little girl. She's the one that favors me more, and Celeste is the one that favors Sinan more. Did this motherfucker say she I was? She wore that dress. She just wore that dress not too long ago. Like he spoke about the daughters in a past tense. Get her pajamas on. She's like, no, daddy, I'm not going to fight. I'm going to fight. I'm going to love those spaghetti strap dresses. She likes long dresses. She was a girly girl. Oh, that's over. Oh, my God, dude. Dude, this is fucking, this is nuts. This is nuts. This is fucking nuts. This is nuts. This is nuts. This is absolutely insane, dude. Dude, this channel is fucking crazy.
Oh, this dude had a, uh, he had a, 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 a Prince Andrew video. Oh my God. Hi, dad. It's not 5K uh, 1080p, it's the opposite. He knows how much prime this man, he will take us to Wonderland. When we find the guy who took him, what do you think we should do? This is what is known as a behavior-provoking question. An innocent person will usually give what is known as a draconian response. They will immediately respond with the harshest sentence possible for the crime they are falsely being accused of committing. Oh, no. A deceptive individual I will often give an equivocating response. This means that they will fragmentize and divert from the question to a certain degree as a means to avoid responding to the query in its entirety. They're going to come home safe, correct? When you find the guy. When we find the guy, they're going to come home. Life in prison would be the, that's what I would, that's what I would think with two kids that are involved. Oh my God, dude. You know, I just, uh, I just, uh, do a psychiatric analysis, uh, and, uh, probably, you know, let the guy go, let the guy walk free. Probably if they, uh, you know, if they kidnap my children. What if he hurt them? Did, uh, did, I'm not sure if like that penalty is even used. Is it used in Colorado? I'm not even sure what is the death penalty. Okay. Um, I mean, like if these kids are not alive, like there's no, there's nothing you could do to, Screw this to guy. cope with that, to make me cope with that. If those kids are not okay. God damn, bro. Yo, how did he fucking hate his children this much? Like. How the fuck face. do you detach from your kids like this? Like, that is so fucking creepy, dude. It is... They're your kids, motherfucker. You, you psycho. Oh, my God, dude. Okay. Can we keep talking about some complicated things? Sure. Some things are going to make you uncomfortable? No, that's fine. Okay. You've done very good in talking to me about this really hard conversation you guys had. Okay. Very it's good. like too good. That's sometimes hard. And I understand why sometimes someone in your position says, uh, doesn't want to tell me about that. Because please go help me find my kids and you don't need to know about my, my marriage argument, okay? So I gotta say, you've done very good at that. Um, and I need you to keep doing that. So I need to ask you about um, your marriage and uh, infidelity. Sure. Okay, tell me about it. Yeah, I have never cheated on my wife. Okay. And I, Fully suspect she has never done that to me. Oh, okay. The interrogator was already aware that Chris was cheating on his wife with a woman by the name of Nicole Kessinger. He had handed over his phone earlier on this interview for what he thought was for the purpose of going through his and his wife's mutual contacts to look for potential suspects. Judging by Chris's bold-faced denial, it's to safe to assume money. he deleted all of his correspondence with Nicole beforehand. Yet he was most likely unaware that the FBI have programs that can recover every single piece of digital exchange sent from a device, even long after it's deleted. Highly trained investigator over here, right? I see pictures of you from a few years ago, mm -hmm. and I see you standing before me now. Oh my oh, god. Yeah, you've pretty fit. Oh my god, this motherfucker literally got fit, found a new girl. Oh, that's so bad, dude. Oh my god, he thought he had a glow up, dude. What a psycho. Oh, Jesus okay. fucking Christ, you dude. When guys start cheating or want to cheat, that's what happens. Yes. So tell me about it. So I did not cheat on my wife. Okay. What do I do to help you walk out of this room and not look like the person who's responsible? You have to trust me. I had nothing to do with, these, with, this, with this act of like evil cruelty, whatever has happened here. He is because my love for these two girls... Wait, I'm confused. At this point, like, he doesn't even fucking know, right? Like, he, or, sorry, he, of course he knows because he did the murder. But, like, th there is nothing that, like, a, an innocent person would not know what is going on. And he, he, the innocent person's mind wouldn't immediately go to, like, this evil act of cruelty. Like, that's really fucking dumb. 
in my life. Like, I don't want anything to happen to them. I've never wanted anything to happen to them. No matter if me and my wife yeah. separate or not, or divorce or anything, I never wish harm on anybody, on a human oh being God, in general. Oh my God, he's just fucking straight like, up admitting. Just seeing that picture, like, I need them, I, I want them just to run through that front door and just grab me. Or just bear, just tackle me, knock me to the floor, bust my head up, I don't care. What? The amount of love I have for my family is exponential, and I, it's never going to die. And they need, I want them back. Okay. I have to have them back. Bro, this guy literally just busted the case wide open, dude. It's a wrap after this. It's a ripperoni. It is a straight... Ripperoni after this. If they didn't know that like uh these the the wife and children were fucking murdered brutally at this point, they know because this guy is just straight being like, Yeah, dude, uh, it would be terrible if they were fucking brutally murdered by someone who is uh you know uh relatively fit wearing a North Carolina Tar Heel shirt. It'd be crazy it'd be it terrible. When you walk out of this room, there's nothing I can say to a room full of police officers that's going to- Yo, Chatter pointed this out too. Sam. Dude, dude, he literally said barrel like multiple times, by the way. Like, oh, I, I uh, you know, I want to do a barrel roll. Like, that's fucking crazy, dude. Oh my God, this fucking piece of shit. He kept saying barrel too. Oh my fucking god, dude. I want to convince them that you have nothing to do with this. I know. You know what they think. I, I know what all that all that. Yeah. Here's a guy who didn't call 911, who woke his wife, wife up at a ridiculous hour because he was so guilty about something that he had to get it off his chest and say, I don't love you anymore, I'm leaving you. That didn't go well. They weren't even dumped in a barrel, though. What, like a fucking oil barrel? Oh, no. Shit, I'm so glad you're reacting to this. Looks good. No, he he. Weren't they literally dumped into an oil barrel? Like a tank, oil tank, a water tank. Oh, Love. I thought it was a. No, it was a huge tank. Oh, okay. My bad. I I thought it was a barrel. I, that's why I thought. She told me she wanted me to wake her up before I left. That's why I didn't just wake her up, like, just to tell her this. Like, I woke her up. That's what she wanted to do, and we talked. Like, usually at 4 a.m., I wake up, I go down and work out. This day, I wanted to talk to her about this. I love these girls. I love these girls so much. And this picture right here. Six months sweaty. Celeste and Bella. Those are my life. I'm helped make those kids. There's nothing in my life that means more to me than these kids. Nothing. Kids, that's that's your life. That's your lifeline. That's everything. Like you make kids. They're, they come oh first my God. Over hey, dude, this is not. 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 That's what it's always been. Literally, just like. Nothing you've told me tonight makes sense. Nothing you've told me tonight feels like the truth. Can we start over? Sure. Tonight's been pretty intense, I can imagine. Drug How are you doing? <laughs> I've, I've slept like two hours last night, so I'm like running on empty right now, but... Yeah. So why do I do this? Acting is terrible. I'm sure you don't mind if we take a break for the night. Um, and I'm sure that you are um, feeling some of the pressure from me. Okay. I'm going to commit to you that we're not going to stop working until we find them. Okay. Okay. 
and I want to commit to you that there is going to come a time when you're going to feel this pressure from other people. I'm not the only one who thinks that there's a possibility you have something to do with this. Like another FBI agent, like, pressure, or like this, like... Everyone. Okay. Everyone, Chris. Okay. The interrogator is clearly receptive to Chris's anxiety and endeavors to amplify this emotion before ending the interview. He wants to inflate Chris's apprehension as much as possible for the looming polygraph test that approaches the following day. Tonight when you go home, one of two things gonna happen. You're gonna pass out because you're so tired, okay? And that's probably not gonna be what happens. Your head's gonna go race, okay? So tonight when you lay down, and your head starts racing, there's going to be things that come to your mind, okay? This always happens, always. It's very natural. You're going to say, I wonder why he asked me that, okay? You're going to say, screw him, how dare he accuse me, okay? You're going to say, I wonder if they thought of this, okay? And then you're going to say, I probably should have told him something, or this or that, okay? Those are the most common things. Um, when those thoughts come to your head, I want you to call me. Oh my fucking god, dude. That's like... Dude, where are these cops, bro? I feel like detectives and, and cops are like different species. Like, you know how people say like, how are these two the same species? Like when you see me and like someone who's like tiny or whatever. It honestly feels like this dude is literally on a different playing field entirely than like the average cop who's just like, oh my god, I saw a fucking phone in his hand. It's time to do a murder. And, and, and unload the entire fucking magazine. Jenks, yes, this dude is like... On Prince Andrew, if you are interested, how the fuck do these guys become detectives exactly if, like, is. they don't want you to be too smart to be a fucking cop? Like, it doesn't make sense. Do they just, like, where do they pick detectives from? They're, they're, these are the people who convince innocent people to plead guilty. This guy doesn't look too thumb like. It checks out. Dude, it's nuts, dude. Don't you need more school to be a detective, especially for the FBI? Is he? He's not FBI. He's a cop, I thought. I thought he was a detective, and he said that like the FBI is going to interrogate him as well. Love you, Ajahn. Keep up the great work. Has Raid has brain F mods. Detectives follow a proven formula step by step. They don't have to think creatively. I mean, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? It's still this formula, no matter what. Dude, he is so perceptive. The way he carries himself in this conversation. Both of these two people that we watched. God damn, this channel is like fucking straight up copaganda. I swear to God. I love you, small kings. Bro, this motherfucker is like unwinding him. Like piece by piece, slowly picking at the threads until this dude straight up just reveals like he, he's just leaking all of his secrets dude and he did that he it's so it, i mean he this is brilliant i mean he's smart i'm sorry he's just fucking incredibly smart those are beautiful kids those kids have a good dad and i know it this is a picture it's on my phone yeah it's a better one but it's just i'm sorry too those kids have a good dad the following discourse from the officer could be construed as the reframing technique, where an interrogator will try and shift the suspect's view of themselves from negative to positive as a means to lightening the iniquity of their crimes and increasing the chances of a confession. However, this is more likely what is known as passive accusation, where the interrogator is almost certain of the suspect's guilt and indirectly accuses and in some manner indignifies the suspect. This is made evident by the high praises the officer gives to Chris for extremely trivial deeds. A lot of dads don't get second pairs of clothes and cook eggs and give them snacks at night. You know, a lot of, a lot of men, that's woman for it, right? I uh, like to get involved. But you're not that kind of guy. Okay. So can we say that tomorrow at 11 o'clock? Sure. We can do a polygraph? Sure. Here. Um, I appreciate you coming in tonight. Mm -hmm. All right. Give me a few minutes. This is Tammy. Did you meet Tammy yesterday? No, it's okay. good. I always Tammy. Hi, Chris. How are you? Is it on this? Yep, I know. It's, I'll explain what that is here in a little bit, yeah. but you don't have to worry. It, it's not on or anything right now. It's not going to buzz you or anything. <laughs> I 
obviously you're probably nervous about taking today's test. Honestly, I would think something is wrong with you if you weren't nervous about coming in here to take a polygraph. Even if people are like, I don't have anything to hide. The lead detective got PTSD from working the case and is on medical leave. What? Dude. Hope your day is going well. So, Thanks from what I understand, uh, this is the part where, in order to beat a polygraph test, this is the part where you have to give, like, uh, false reports. So, some people will put, like, a, like a pin uh, under their toe or something and then, like, stab it while they're answering, right? Isn't that how you do it? It is nerve-wracking. Right. I have taken tons of polygraphs, obviously, in my training. Um, that I doesn't work. I thought training. that... I thought there was like a way to. Did you watch Ocean's Eleven? Was that in Ocean's Eleven? Hassle. I thought that there was like w we've all seen Ocean's Thirteen. Was that in Ocean's Eleven? I don't fucking know. I don't remember. You should play Disco Elysium to be a detective yourself. That's a self report. <laughs> I mean, it's not viable for court. Up, yeah, I, I know you can't use a polygraph and and uh, it's, it's like a polygraph is like a. Of course, bullshit. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's like a free field breathalyzer test. I can't believe I've been a for about for about five years. Um, I went to the best school in the country, so I want you to have confidence in the fact that you had nothing to do with this disappearance. Like we're going to find that out today. Okay, I have the best training that they offer in the United States. Um, I, we use the most validated testing. Um, that the way I'm going to ask you the question. Oh my so, God. She's trying to get him fucking riled up, dude. She's like, listen, if, if you had nothing to do with this, like, it, oh, my God. Believe me, if you had nothing to do with this, I will be able to show them that today. This is psychological pressure disguised as reassurance. It's not a routine procedure during the pretest phase of a polygraph exam, yet this technique will be used when the suspect's guilt is almost conclusive. Polygraphs are not a foolproof a system, and they can be beaten, but with a heightened state of anxiety, it becomes considerably more challenging and unlikely. On this occasion, the polygrapher distinctly applies this technique for maximal effect. <laughs> There's actually only two ways you can fail a polygraph, okay? So the first way would be if you fail to follow my instructions. I'm going to give you a lot of instructions today about how to sit still, how to answer questions, things like that. So if you fail to follow those instructions, you will not pass today's test, okay? Right. The second way would be if you choose to lie to me today. You know, if you did have something to do with their disappearance, um, it would be really stupid for you to come in and take a polygraph today, right? Like, it would be really dumb. Like, you should not be here right now sitting in this chair if you had anything to do with Shanann and the little girl's disappearance, okay? Well, yeah, like, we just, everything flourished from there, like, in 2011, I, pr I proposed to her over in Ocean Isle Beach. And, it was, <laughs> and she was just sitting there crying with a little eviction notice. And Bro, got... you're laughing with a murderer, dog. What the fuck, lady? Oh, my God, dude. You're laughing with a dude I who's done know. unspeakable acts. Uh, she, yeah, she recorded it. It was really, it was an amazing day to see that, and then... It's an act? Well, I know, but it's was, scary. Was, dude, these people are demons, yo. They are fucking good, dude. Hey, guys. If if uh, something was preventing you from... Uh, if, if it wasn't just a morality alone that was going to prevent you from doing a murder, let this be a lesson. These motherfuckers will get you, dude. Okay? Holy shit. It's crazy, dude. Yeah. It is actually fucking crazy how good these guys are. I was there, like, she had a midwife for this one. So, like, they actually had me, like, oh, you can stand here and, like, you know, catch her. And, like, well, but Celeste came out, like, so fast that, like, I barely had a chance to go like this. And they moved me out of the way because she just, like, came out. The polygrapher will also obtain the examinee's version of the facts regarding the specific issues under investigation. Like, I was just hoping that I would get that knock on the door or a phone call or a text. I mean... Her phone, I mean, they have her phone, like hopefully maybe it's a number I don't know. Hopefully it's like, you know, like a burner, a burner phone or some, some, kind of, some kind of like phone she bought and she could just text me and call me like, hey, I'm okay. Something, or just get a knock on the door and then the kids just run in. I miss like the kids like sitting at the dinner table and like having to tell them to eat their dinner. And, like I miss them throwing their chicken nuggets at me. Like I was, I just want to find them. I want them to come home safe, like wherever they are. I hope they are safe. And I really, I really hope they. Bro, can this come dude home. does not shut up, dude. This dude is 
just incapable of shutting the fuck up. Again, the common thread that we see in all of these fucking murderers and shit is that they literally think they're smarter than they actually are. Like, you they cannot day, fucking stop to... themselves <laughs> from over-explaining and constantly thinking like, oh no, like, if I feed this, like, information slowly but surely, I certainly will be able to make people uh, feel less suspicious about me. It's crazy. It makes me feel like, all right, maybe somebody has her that's not, that's not keeping her safe. She's using her sign or something terrible board. that happened. That is, that's the nightmare. And what would that terrible thing be? If somebody hurt them. Chris recounts a brief summary of the events and states multiple vague possibilities for his family's disappearance. Oh, Jesus. The polygrapher then starts to elect specific timelines for Chris to give his account on. Oh, um, Jesus, dude. You said the next thing you know is her getting into bed with you? Is that right? I could not felt her getting into bed. We didn't say anything because I, I just kind of felt it. Okay. Do you know if she was on her phone or like how any of that works? I don't, I don't think she was on her phone. Are you mad at all? I mean, being crying, crying like she was, crying like I was, I mean, yeah, I mean, she was upset, but I mean, it was, it, was, it comes Wait, the polygraph hasn't started yet? I thought, like, My at God. least he's hooked up at this point. Bro, look how many hours have passed. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? Bro, this dude is insane. What is he doing? Oh my god, dude. He, he's just like, before the polygraph, even the mere mention of the polygraph was like enough for him to just self-report all over the fucking place. Can we wrap this up quickly? Because I'm watching you all. I'm supposed to be working and I need to get back to work. Fuck that, dude. Hey, boss makes a dollar, you make a dime. That's why you fucking watch the Hassan Abbey stream on the company time, okay? With that kind of conversation. In the next moments, you will see another subterfuge of psychological pressure, this time disguised as routine questioning procedure. It's okay. a vastly open-ended question relevant to- Yo, bring to your boss in. Bring your manager in and be like, yo, dude, you gotta fucking watch this shit. This is crazy. This guy, we're watching this guy with the fucking chat right now. This guy just did a murder and he's just revealing all of it for no reason. Like, <laughs> before you know it, you and your fucking manager are gonna be sitting there with popcorn watching this shit. This Looks is good. crazy. He's trying to filibuster his way out of prison. He is getting fucking busted into right now. To the crimes under suspicion. These types this of questions crazy. are common knowledge and easily clarified by the innocent, while the guilty will in most cases have severe difficulty in responding. I know it's totally awful to think about, but what are ways, because I need to make sure that you know what I'm talking about, what are ways that you can make someone disappear? Oh. I mean, like, if you're talking about, like, what I've seen, like, on the movies, or, like, oh God, how, dude. Like, how people, uh, if you read about other people, I mean, you hire somebody. Like a hitman? Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, yeah. I'm just being honest. No, nope, that's what I want. That's what I want, because I want you to go through all of these scenarios in your head, because I want you to know for sure what I'm talking about when I say that, you know, asking you if you physically caused her disappearance. Okay. Motherfucker Googled it, bro. What do you do when you're... Oh God, dude. Oh Jesus. He, 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 he's voice cracking like E-Rob. It's just, it's a wrap. It's GG's. This is over. Like, like you'd hire somebody or you have a, somebody you know that, that would do it. I mean, it's like, I don't, I mean, it's hard. And, it's a hard I know question that, and I know this. Why? Dude, that's such a wild thing. That's such a wild thing to say. Like, what would you do? How would you kidnap uh, your wife and kids? You'd be like, I don't fucking know. Like, walk into the house with a gun or something? Unless you yourself have Googled it. Like, who the fuck would hire a hitman to kidnap your wife and kids, dog? How do you not realize, even at this point, that, like, you are literally the prime suspect and perhaps the only suspect? This is crazy. Like... No normal husband would respond calmly. I'd be freaking out. It's just nuts. What would you answer? I wouldn't. I'd be fucking freaking out, dude. I'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know. I don't want to think about this shit, dude. What? 
you know what I would say in this situation? I'd be like, I'm trying to imagine if I was ever in a situation like this and I had a loved one that's like lost, right? I'd be like, why are you talking to me right now? Every moment that you spend talking to me right now is a moment that you're not utilizing to find my fucking wife and children. Are you fucking insane? That's what you would normally say. I feel like now I'm training you guys to lie. You know what I mean? In a situation where you like murdered your family or something. But like literally, that's what a normal murder. person would do. Like it's you'd nuts. be like, what the fuck Thanks are you? What commentary. are we doing right now? Better than watching this late at night in the dark like I did the documentary. Like, what, what are we doing? What the fuck are we doing? You know what I'm saying though? It's like, you just be like, what is happening right now? You're asking me how... Like, what would happen in this situation where, like, my wife is potentially fucking murdered? Like, how would I do it? I don't know. I don't fucking know, dude. I can't think about that right now. How much do you charge per hour for murder advice? You already know, dude. Twitch Primes. For free. That's how you get the murder advice. We have time to be and it's not the murder advice. Months, but this it's is the getting away Dajan. from the murder advice that I'm giving you, technically. That's a hard question to answer. Right. Because uh, I didn't... It has nothing to do with this disappearance. Right. But like, I don't even want to think about like if I, if if you're asking me like how I would do it. Like, no, I don't anyone. Know. Like, anyone. how would how would anyone how would I do it? No, 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 anyone. No, no, no. But like, how how about how I would do it? <laughs> I mean, you would. Like, you because of someone's disappearance. Oh, he has a more personal connection with this murder than his children. Okay. That's another like immediate self-report where whenever he talks about his kids, he's like these kids, those kids, those kids was, were, those kids were, these kids were. But when he's talking about the murder, he's like literally talking about it personally as though he fucking did it, dude, which is because he did do it. But like, there you go. There you fucking go. He, I mean, he's just straight up like, you know, how would I do the murder? It's like, no, we meant like, how would a murder happen if there was a murder? How would I do it? by murdering them. Yes. you agree with that? Yes. So what different physical different ways would you cause someone's disappearance through murder? You could stab someone, right? Stab someone, shoot someone, hit them with a blunt object. Um, One TED talk on how to get away with murder, please. There, I mean, use a weapon like gun or a knife. I mean, okay. you could... Yeah, let's not Thanks forget for that advice, all bro. of this is a waste of time because Detective Fred Durst, a.k.a. the neighbor, already solved it, like, immediately. It was like, yeah, this is a fucking crime. This guy is a murderer, arrest him, officer. He's behaving very frantically. <laughs> so, did they... Uh, so, the question I have is, like, and I don't know, and maybe you guys know this, did they find the bodies at this point? Like, do they know that the, uh, the fucking wife and kids are murdered? Because like, is this is an afterthought. Like he might not be mentioning those, but she doesn't know that he's not mentioning those specific causes. You know what I mean? At this point, they don't even know if they're dead, right? Yeah. Did someone? Smother someone. Is the buff all fat? Did strangle someone? Hang someone, yeah, he can, all that kind of things. I mean, it's hard to even think about that kind of stuff right now. Mm -hmm. So you could strangle someone, you could drown someone. Yeah. You could shock someone to death. Um, you could burn someone alive. Um, what are the ways you can think of? As far as like, like lure them into a trap, I guess. So what do you mean? What? Like, you know, like have somebody waiting like around the corner and like you know, I even, sure. uh, oh. this is some yeah, real psychotic up. shit sure. um by the way just like so if i ask you that question on the test chris are you gonna have any issue with that about you like, physically causing like going through every single one of those yeah like that would be a way right. you could cause someone's disappearance okay uh, no, i know i can definitely like I can pass. I mean, I, I mean, you can murder them, you can kidnap them, you can take them to another country, you could 
you know, bury them in your backyard. You could, yeah. you could do a million things yeah. as far as um, trying to conceal them, Yeah. right? So that no one can find them. It's been hours, dude. He's just having fun with her at this point. This is so fucking crazy. Because at, at this point, she... I feel like this dude is literally crazier than, like, these serial killers. Because, like, with serial killers, you know something is broken, right? With, like, a lot of the serial killers you talk to, like, you're like, okay, there's something going on there that's, like, a little weird. This guy is, like, painfully boring and normal. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, he could just be, like, a regular fucking accountant. Like, he's having a conversation about, like, the potential strangulation of his, his wife and children, like, uh, being murdered by, like, uh, someone who smothered him to death, as though, which is, by the way, what he did. But, like, he's talking about it, even if he didn't do it, he's talking about it, like, in the most passive way possible. And it's fucking crazy. He's gone. So when I ask you the question on the test, I'm not asking you about guilt. I'm not asking you about... Did you make her feel so horrible that she ended up leaving? I'm saying that you were the one that physically caused her to disappear. Okay. Either by murder, kidnapping, you know, all of those other things okay. that we went through, okay? You want me to list, you want me to list all those? Like, no, no, no. Okay. You're just going to say no to that question. Okay. Right? When I ask you if you physically caused Shanann's disappearance, okay. your answer should be what? No. Right. So do you have any issues with that at all? And no. have any question about what I would mean when I was? No, that's, that's asking totally. Like, I just like going through all those that. Um, August. <laughs> that's right. a lot to really think about. Right. Like but trying to figure out like, I, yeah, that was. I'm gonna have you take a bath and break. Thank We've you. been in here quite a while. You're gonna be taking what's called a directed lie polygraph. So what that means is there are going to be test questions on the test where I want you to lie. I know it seems kind of weird, but you're going to know which question. It's kind of wild that this motherfucker hadn't peed for that long, by the way. When I can't even hold the piss in my body for like 20 minutes at a time. Questions these are, and they're going to be easy to answer. They're all going to start with before 2018. The directed lie test. That's how you know he's a serial killer, dude. Known truth questions. These are easy questions to answer, such as, are you sitting down? Or, are you wearing shoes? They serve two purposes. The first purpose Control. is to provide a baseline reading for when the subject is telling the truth and should elicit very little bodily responses. The second purpose is to disconnect the examinee's thought patterns between each question as a means for resetting their cerebration for a more accurate reading. Control questions. These are what the polygrapher just explained to Chris. Whenever she says, before 2018, at the start of a question, Chris will know he is purposely supposed to lie. Each of these questions are deliberately constructed that all answers will be responded with no. Relevant questions. These relate specifically to the crime being investigated, and this the examinee will know that they are supposed to respond bits. truthfully. A guilty subject will show a much stronger reaction to the relevant questions than to the control question. He doesn't choke even though like they a diabetic racehorse? Yeah, this is the this reason is why I pissed so much. This is the immediate threat posed by the relevant questions. So I'm going to say before 2018, did you ever lose your temper with someone you cared about? And you're going to say? No. Because you're telling a lie. Awesome. People, hey, wired people, happy, high chat, seven months, yes. bog, seven months. The test is about to begin. Please remain still. Months, did you write the number one? No. Did you write the number three? No. Did you write the number five? No. This portion of the test is complete. Please remain still while I take the instrument. Time to throw a puck champ. Time to throw a puck champ. Okay, you can relax. And feel. This is the last time the polygrapher will have any correspondence with Chris before the real test begins. She gives him an initial compliment in a reassuring tone. Yeah, the weirdest part about this is that, like, I'm getting secondhand anxiety. Like, it's such a weird fucking situation that you're in because you're like, you're like, in a weird way, you know he's a piece of shit murderer, but also you're like, he fucking murdered someone, but like, you're getting anxious for him, which is very weird. Or maybe it's just me. I don't know what it is. And, and, and it's really weird. It's a really weird situation, dude. Why the fuck am I getting anxious for him? He's a fucking murderer, dog. What the fuck? Great. Yeah, you're like, I sure hope he passes the test. No, I don't actually want that. Glad I want to him to fail to because he's a murderer. Minutes. But also simultaneously, I'm like, fuck, dude. Is he going to pass? Remember to lie and everything. That was awesome. That was... <laughs>
This momentary boost in his confidence is then abruptly ripped away as he receives the following information. So, you obviously are a really bad liar. Have people told you that before? Like, the second you tell a lie, like, they can tell, like, on your face that... Because the second you lied to the number three, like, I don't know if you heard me clicking, but I, like, turned down the sensitivity because you're starting to go off the page. So, that is what I need to see as a polygrapher because that tells me that you know it's wrong to tell a lie. Um, and you're actually having a significant reaction when you lie, so that is awesome. Bro, I can see his chest, dude. Look, chat, chat. Literally look at his chest when she says that. I need to see as a polygrapher because that tells me that you know it's wrong to tell a lie. Um, and you're actually having a significant you reaction what? when you lie, so that is awesome. Oh my god! You can literally see him breathing, dude. He's like... <sighs> oh my god! Oh my fucking god, dude. He's like... <sighs> oh, Jesus fucking Christ. She just... Bro, that's what happens when a Sigma male gets fucking dumpstered, okay? Awesome, so thank you for being a proper okay, liar. I, I no, that's a good go. thing. That's a good thing. We don't want to be good liars, so... Thank you for being a horrible liar. Um, and that just shows me that, you know, obviously on the test when they're asking, you know, significant stuff about your wife, um, if you're lying to that, it's going to be even 10 times more amplified. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that very much, more than you know. So that was awesome. And the coolest thing about this is right now, there's only one person in this room that knows what the truth is. And in about five minutes, there's going to be two of us. So. Oh my God. Okay. Now I understand why fucking polygraphs are, like are never uh, sure. applicable in court cases, dude. Because straight up, this entire thing is just a mindfuck. Like, it has nothing to do with the truth. And everything to do... Every... Everything to do with just, like, breaking this person, okay? It's just manipulative as fuck, dude. It has nothing to do with the truth, dude. What the fuck? That woman is gaslighting, gatekeeping, and girl bossing subsequently. Yes. If you are innocent, a lie detector test will never be your ace in the hole. So dumb to do one. Yeah, it's nuts. Bart, okay. And then I can go share that with them out there. Okay. All right, you ready? Let's do it. The test is about to begin. Please remain still. Do you understand I will only ask you the questions we have discussed? Yes. Regarding Shanann's disappearance, do you intend to answer all of the questions truthfully? Yes. Is your first name Christopher? Yes. Before 2018, did you ever lose your temper with someone you cared about? No. Did you physically cause Shanann's disappearance? No. Oh. Were you born in 1985? Yes. Before 2018, did you ever say anything out of anger to a loved one? No. Are you lying about the- Okay, this is like confusing as fuck too. Oh, dude, 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 dude. This is like also purposely fucking confusing. It's so fucking confusing, dude. But what's not confusing is the top of the hour ad that's coming right now. And if you're further not confused, or if you don't want to be confused even further, then the way to avoid those ads is by subscribing. Now you can subscribe for five dollars, or with a C with a Twitch Prime. <laughs> Let's go, dude! <laughs> ah, okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, with a Twitch Prime, you can uh, subscribe for free. Uh, it's uh, you know, and uh, you will no longer see the ads. Or an ad break, or a fucking VPN, or an ad block, you know? <laughs> oh! Oh, that was good. Oh, fuck, dude. Oh. Oh, man, I'm so proud of myself. I just, I sit. <laughs> I just, uh, I just stay awake at night writing different methods on how to fucking, how to clap you, dude. Just, that's how I do it. Here's the woman at break now. <sighs> wow. I'm learning how to be a sociopath from this fucking, uh, from this dude. You're fired straight up. Okay, let's keep going.
God Last damn, dude. Yeah. No. Are you now in the state of Colorado? Yes. Before 2018, have you ever wanted to hurt someone to get even with them? No. Do you know where she Like, the lie on purpose shit is so confusing. Because then, like... I mean, I, I don't like that. I, I would fuck it up. I would fuck this up straight up. I would fuck this up super hard. Man is now. No. This portion of the test is complete. Please remain still while I take the instrument out of operation. Alright, how'd you feel? Same? Yeah. All of it? Yeah, it was the same to everything. For ya. We'll be right back. Good. What the fuck? Oh my gosh, I didn't forget part of it, did I? Yeah. I mean, this motherfucker knows already, so... Should I brought Graham in here? Because we want to talk to you about the results, okay? Sure. Oh no, oh no, no, no. So, um, it is completely clear that you were not honest during the testing, and I think you already know that. Um, you did not pass the polygraph test. Right? Okay. Okay. So now we need to talk about what actually happened. And I feel like you're probably ready to do that. I didn't, I didn't lie to you on that polygraph, I promise. Chris, I, I'm, I'm, I'm no. just stop. It's time. I, just I'm, stop for a minute. Take a deep breath. I, I want you to take a deep breath right now. Dude, these videos are made by a demon, okay? I just like, this motherfucker just straight up plays interrogation footage, and I just sit here and chomp on my fucking fingers until they're nubs. What is this, dude? This is crack cocaine. Why are they so good? I don't understand why they're so fucking good. It's literally like the pacing of it, the the way that these fucking videos are are built like it's okay. it's great but also it it's it's kind of like uh i don't know how to describe it like it's kind of i mean i'm subscribing for sure but it's kind of like he's not even trying that hard like he's just showing you the the interrogations like that's it and and i i just can't like Can you please watch fast? I was planning on working out tonight. No, dude, I can't. Same thing happened to me when I first found this channel. It was very worrying that you enjoyed this so much. Hassan exposed. Yeah. <laughs> JCS is a team of writers. The narrator just comes, off, comes in at the end to do the voiceover. It's it's just fucked up, dude. It's fucked up. Okay, let's keep watching. I didn't lie to you on that polygraph, I promise. Chris, I, I'm, I'm, I'm no. stop. Oh my God. I'm, just I'm, stop for a minute, take a deep breath. I want you to take a deep breath right now. There's a reason you feel sick to your stomach. And when people hold stuff inside, it makes you physically ill. And I can just tell on your face, I can tell you. One fact, the narrator is a total chudge. The person on the channel has all these vids about how scary Antifa is. Wait, what? I thought the narrator was like a leftist, dude. What the fuck? Some people are saying the narrator, narrate. Some people are saying the narrator is a leftist. Others are saying he's a fucking chud. Anyway, I, thought, I don't give a shit. Oh my God, dude. Straight doo-doo Daphne gamer posture right here, dude. This is the most gamer ass posture I've ever seen. There's a really good docuseries on Netflix, just like this one. Only every episode is about how cops can get an innocent person to incriminate themselves. Tell from the second you walked in that you were wanting to just come clean and just be done with this. 
This is a technique known as social exchange, an interpersonal persuasion strategy in which the interrogator provides the suspect with a psychological reward in return for the information they need. In this case, she's trying to convince Chris that the alleviation of mental weight is a worthy trade for a confession. She does this in a manner that protects his self-esteem by giving him appreciative reinforcements. And I appreciate that because you knew sitting down in that chair that you weren't going to pass today and you knew I was going to find out because I told you that and then you continued to stay knowing that you could at the end say, you know what, I just need to get this off my chest. Everything that I've, just, I've told you, I did not lie on this polygraph. I am, I don't know how much I could, I could tell you right now, like, I did not it's, pass, it's not I even, it's not even an option right now because I you did not pass the polygraph, I so I know you were being deceptive, so that's not even an issue, an issue right now. The issue right now is what happened to Shanann, Bella, and Celeste. The following tactic is called the futility technique, a building block to induce a sense in a suspect that any resistance on behalf of their cause is futile due to the overwhelming evidence against them. This was obviously not the case, as polygraphs are not admissible evidence, and Chris was in fact still free to leave at this point. That's the issue right now. Correct. Okay. okay, so let's talk about that. I know, I know you want to tell us. I, I, can, I can see it in your face. Holding this lie in is going to do nothing for you. I, I know this. Like, okay. I'm not, like, trying to, like, cover things up. Like, it Loki, this is the first time that he actually comes across as, like, as innocent. You know what I mean? Where, like, not really, but, like, the other parts, the other parts, he was so fucking guilty. The other parts... Like every single part of this process, every single part of this process from start to finish, he has come across as so fucking guilty that this is the first time where I'm like, I mean, he's like expressing a little bit of anger almost. <laughs> this guy is super guilty. Yeah, but you kind of are because in, in, it's normal. This is no longer an interview to collect information. The steps of asking questions and receiving answers is over, and the interrogators are now in the process of leading the suspect into a state of mental exhaustion. The detectives will attentively watch for denials and stop them before they can be voiced. Letting the suspect deny his guilt will only increase his confidence and prolong his cerebral stamina. Normal people would do that. Normal people that make a mistake initially are gonna go, I don't know what you're talking about, I didn't do anything. That's normal. I would expect that. That's a natural reaction that someone's going to initially lie about something like that and then eventually tell the truth. So this is your eventually telling the truth time. This is where this is where the rubber meets the road, Chris. Like, don't let this continue any longer, please. I'm not trying to make anything continue. Like, I want them back home, like. But you know they're not coming back home. You know that. I don't know in the back of my head. I'm, I hope they come back home. But you know they're not. Chris, oh and my God. Yeah. And here's what we're confused about. I told you that we've done some work overnight. Yeah. I told you that we've got a lot of leads. Okay, and that wasn't a lie. I know. We know a lot more than you think we do. The dossier technique is a variant of the futility technique, the only difference being that the detectives are far more cryptic and often deceptive about the evidence they have. This will hint at things in a vague manner for the purpose of escalating a suspect's uncertainty. Where are they? I don't know where they're at. We know the pause. He's done the pause already. He's gonna... I do not know where they're at. Oh, he's gonna keep at. talking. If I could have my babies back home right now, I would. I want them back. I want everybody back. That is the God's honest truth. Although the detectives want to intensify Chris's psychological stress levels, they do not want him to become reactively agitated, as this could lead him to objecting and resisting every step of the way, and the interrogation will never get off the ground. It also significantly increases the chances of him requesting legal counsel and ending the interrogation outright. This elicits the interrogator to change approach and utilize what is known as the ego up technique, where the detective will build on the self-respect of the suspect through positive reinforcement. Yo, I feel like he's just making this shit up. Up. I don't know why <laughs> these techniques all sound like just uh, patchwork like he just like made it up as he was going along you know what I'm saying this is the ego up technique
This is the, this is the, I just made this up. This is not a real technique. It is very surprising to me and it warms my heart that you're the type of dad who can pack a bag. I gotta more. fucking stand up for this boy. You know just what to put in there. You know just what to put in there as a backup in case they have an accident. Okay. You know what the clothes to put in there. You know what they have for breakfast. You know what they have for a snack and a dinner and a nighttime snack. You can tell me the book you read to your daughters. Okay. I know you love them. But you aren't here today lying about something else. So we need to talk about that, okay? About you, daughter. I know. And this is very good. I, 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 I saw her, took my breath away, and I never thought in a million years that could happen. I, know. I never felt that way about anything. Here you have a Sigma male break his frame piece by piece, boys. A Sigma male whose frame is broken. I like anybody in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. I'm not proud of it. She accused me of it. I denied it. I, I, she was on her, and I feel horrible for it. Like she was pregnant, and Gooda bombs. it was Gooda bombs at Gooda bombs dot me dot twitch dot tv prisms hashtag Hassan Abai. You look so proud of yourself when you transitioned her. into that eleven ten. Good job. This is the Chris that I knew would come out today. This is the Chris who tells the truth because you're a truth teller. I don't think this girl. You're a murderer, dog. <laughs> it's kind of wild to be like, you're a truth teller. You're a fucking murderer. Did anything to hurt anybody. When you leave her out of it, I'm okay. going to get back to your wife and your daughters. Okay. Where are they? That I do not know. That was what I was holding back. Like, I didn't know, like, Chris. what I did. Chris. I know, Chris, in the interview today, you weren't asked about infidelity. You were asked about... That was, I was holding back from last night. That's when not you why talk. you failed today. That's not how that works. Here's the challenge that we have. We knew about Nikki, and so we didn't she was pregnant, to ask yeah. you about her in the polygraph. We just didn't need to, because we knew, okay? And so, that's why we didn't ask you, because we already knew the answer, okay? We're very, very worried about your daughters and your wife. I am too. This should have been the happiest time of your marriage. Okay? You and Shanann. This should have been the happiest time. She's making a little money. She's making good money. You're making great money. You both have a job. You have beautiful kids. You have a beautiful house. You're in Colorado. Clean air. Good people. Okay? And on top of that, you look pretty good now. You're pretty fit. Okay? This should have been a time in your marriage where you guys were happy and thriving and productive. Okay? And I believe... You look pretty hot, that dude. The reason That's that our happened. tool of the... This is called the how and why solution. A technique that allows the suspect to admit a lesser act and blame the victims, while at the same time minimizing the crime and motivations of his actions. I believe that she's a controlling person. Maybe doesn't listen to you as much as she... There's no shot the average fucking cop can fit all of this information in their brain, okay? Like, all of these techniques and shit, like, there's just no shot. Why are people adding 39 doo-doo? Azan Pogo. This is the call the 39 daft technique, dude. She should. I think that you guys are going to do whatever she wants and you can't. Okay? I think if you were to go to a restaurant, she would order whatever the hell she wants. And as soon as you order a nice steak, she says, whoa, buddy. It's because you're a good person, and I think that she started on the path to leave the marriage. Okay. It's ironic that we're talking about you and Nikki. I think that she was the one who started on that path first. What do you think about that? I wouldn't have thought about that. Okay. And the other thing I think is interesting is, Zero even though she is that type of person that's controlling, doesn't listen, does what she wants, is walking away from her kids, here you are defending her. Because to your core, you want to take care of the people you love. Okay. Now that's the reason why we want to give you an opportunity today to just help us find them. Okay. Chris, right now your dad's that wife. He flew across the country to help them. Okay. Didn't his dad end up uh, leaking it? You're lying to him. You're lied to everyone you talk to. And they all bought it. Will you please help us find you? 
babies. I want to find them. I've told you over and over, I want to find everyone. Can you understand that some of this just doesn't make sense? Was, how is it possible that a woman and two kids are just completely gone off the face of the earth? I promise you, I have, I have nothing on my hands that's, I did nothing to those kids or her to make them vanish. As the interrogation goes on, the constant and relentless psychological pressure. The wildest part of this is that the detective is lying to him so hard. To function cognitively, it's a slow and methodical process of breaking down his resistance while maintaining a balance of pugnacious and reassuring psychological techniques. I just, I just find it hard to hear you talk about just having this emotional, All right, fine. you know, conversation with Shanann, and you're bawling and crying together, and you have not shed one tear in two days that you've been here. No, not one. And I, help me understand that because I don't <laughs> get it. You're, these are your baby girls. And you have not shed one tear over them not being around. Chris, I, uh, I, 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 I lose my four year old in the store for 10 seconds and I start to go panic, panic. I have not seen any of that from you. At all. Good one, Aja. Help me understand I, that. I love those girls. I, I would never do any of this because I haven't shed a tear. You get yeah, no, that's weird. I, Is I, that I, weird? I, don't, don't look into that like I don't love my well, kids. Tell me, my explain wife. to me. You're, you're crying with your wife that you're leaving her. Yeah. But you don't cry that you're too little baby. Okay, he's going to start, 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 start fake crying. He's going to start fake crying. In the next moments, you will see step seven of the read interrogation technique known as the alternative question, where the suspect is given okay. an alternative and far more morally acceptable choice for what happened. Chris, did Shanann do something to them? No, I don't know. Damn I'm serious. I have no clue. So you would have known. They didn't leave the house. Did Shanann do something to them, and then did you feel like you had to do something to Shanann? They were at the house when I left. They were there. They weren't there. They didn't leave. They vanished. They were the only way they could have left is in your truck. Okay, the irony of all of these techniques is that this motherfucker revealed more shit when he wasn't aware that they were suspicious of him, then now when they're like obviously suspicious of him and they're trying to break him down, but like he already gave the game away in the first hour that he talked to this guy. When he was just like, oh, th those kids, it'd be a shame if they were murdered. I mean, if someone like fucking murdered them and then dumped them in an oil barrel, that would be a real fucking shame. That'd be crazy. Like if I were to kill them, you know, like, I think that this dude is is more confident and like better at impersonally donating. He's like to better broken down when he's confident and feels like he knows segue. what the fuck's up. Like he he has like full control over the situation where he he's made to feel like he is controlling the narrative. Did Shanann do something? Something happened in the house that you know about. We know that something happened to all three of them. But I want to know did something happen to these baby girls first? that you had to take into your own hands and deal with. You had to clean it up for Shanann. Chris, you gotta tell us. There's something that happened to these big girls. Look at them. I know. Before I came in, I was watching videos. We have no doubt you love these girls with all of your heart. I have no doubt. But we make mistakes. I feel as That's manipulated okay. as Mr. Watts. It's what Just we do with those mistakes that make us who we are. Just the oopsie where you did a fucking triple homicide. I expect you to be supporting the thin blue line soon at Hussein Abbey. I feel like you cleaned up for her. I feel like that's the type of guy that you are. Quadruple homicide. Sorry. There's a weight that's going to be on you for the rest of your life until we resolve it tonight. Unless we can talk about this more tonight, we're going to follow you forever. I promise you, when you start talking to us, you will feel better. Chris, we're giving you a lifeline right now. You need to take it. You need to reach out and take it. 
because she took them out of the house with 15 her blankets months and her old. animals. And that's because he cared. That's what a caring dad does. And you either cleaned up after Shanann or you made the mistake and... Dude, these guys are psychos too, by the way. Like, you gotta be a fucking real psychopath to be able to say nice things to a person who you're sitting across from that you legitimately believe murdered his fucking pregnant wife and two kids, like two babies. Like, you're such a good dad. Like, I would not be able to do that. I, I just be like, I, I, I would not be able to control myself in this situation. You know what I mean? Like, it's fucking insane where uh, they are able to do that. I, mean, I want to believe that maybe Shanann did it and you felt compelled to fix this so Shanann didn't look bad. That's what I, that's what I want to believe. But I don't know, you're not telling me that, so it makes me think the worst. Like, did you I did not do all three of them? I like, did not do anything. Not do anything. What did Shanann do though? Tell us, Chris. Chicks are crazy. Can I have talk to my dad or something? Chicks are crazy. Absolutely. Come on. Do you want to bring him in here? No, uh, I just can't talk to my dad. Like, he flew across the country. He crashed. I can't. How about this? If we brought your dad in here, would you please tell him what happened? You need to realize that your dad is not going to stop loving you no matter what you tell him. You are his child. And he will not stop loving you. Never. Never. And this is not the last chapter in anyone's story. At all. Okay. Whew. Hey, Chris, we're going to let you have uh, however much time you need, okay? Sure. You can leave us in there or no? Uh, yeah. Yes. Sure. Don't watch the long thing, or? And then just uh, the polygraph failed it. Failed it. There, because there's too much emotions. It's the only thing else you want to tell me what's, what's going on or what I have to do. I don't even know anything about When we had that conversation that morning, it was, you know, it was emotional and it was told her about separation and everything like By that. By Chad Hassel. Oh my god. Oh my god. Is he about to leak? Dude, that sucks, dude. Imagine you fucking make a son. You make a fucking son. You raise him. And then he turns out to be a fucking mass murderer, dude. This is called the dad technique, by the way. Eight months. Very effective. I'm just, I'm sorry. I need to, like, maybe joke a little bit in this situation, because... It's fucking, this is disastrous. If I sub, do I also get saved from your awful it's dark. the hour transitions? Well, I don't want to protect her. I don't want to protect her. I don't know what else to say. I want to say. Oh my god. Talking about separation and everything about she lost. I don't know like what else to say, but I can tell. They fed her they fed him this out. They fed him this out. That's why she's saying this, dude. They literally gave him this out. I mean, they fed him this as an out. Like, that was a bait. They're, they're blue. Yes. She 
took a photo of that. I freaked out when you sent me. For those of you who are confused, that's not what happened. He murdered his wife and then he murdered his children. But what happened in the previous fucking because people are confused. His wife and children. No, because people some people in the chat are confused. Don't say yes or whatever we know. Some people in the chat are fucking confused. That lady basically allowed him to feel safe Love about you. admitting that he murdered the wife by feeding him a fucking story that would appeal to his sensibilities as the hero in the situation while simultaneously basically admitting that like everyone fucking died. Okay? So that's what he did to his dad to feel to feel uh the freedom that comes from like admitting that they're dead as they were telling him he would feel. He basically fucking lied to his dad. So now, yeah, so now he can fucking point to where the bodies are or some shit. I'm finally back to catch a stream, goddamn. Thanks, Hassan B. Girl. Healing. Okay. Less than 10 seconds after the mention Dude, how of the do word you lawyer, the detectives re enter the room and immediately how reinforce do you do that? Chris with non verbal empathic communication. They immediately divert Chris's attention from the well informed advice of his father to their own appreciative reception of his contemporary admittance. Can you help us work there? That's with you, okay? Dude, that's crazy. That's crazy. I don't know how you, you fucking. R.I.P. the pussy. This is wild. Although not the full avowal they are pursuing, Chris has still confessed partly to the crimes, and they now have one foot in the door. He is no longer free to leave. The interrogation now returns so to a non-suggestive right process, where the detectives will collect further information, where they will not contaminate with excessive or direct input. Mm -hmm. How are people calling her sick when she's getting a confession for a murder? They're not. It, it is remarkable like, that she is so skilled at consoling a murderer. That's what the fucking. Netflix, huh? That's the reason why people are like this crazy. Do you not see that? Like, even as a part of your job, like, you gotta be a little bit of a sociopath to be able to do that. I don't know what to do. I didn't know what to fucking do. Like, none of, this, none of this made sense. Why would she hear my fucking girls? I'm sorry. I know you are. I guess it's kind of like a surgeon. You know what I mean? Like, ultimately, a surgeon is basically cutting you up. And, in, and they don't get freaked the fuck out by that because they're so used to it. So what she's doing here is kind of like that. It's the difference between a fucking surgeon and a psychopathic murderer. Is your new favorite thing to call things demons? Like, you absolutely she's doing are. this for good. But it's still kind of crazy that she's, like, doing this. You know what I mean? I'm like, god damn. Like, you are... Literally, like being so kind to a person who just murdered their fucking entire family. CS, so it's now it wild. Makes me extra sad. Or a gynecologist who doesn't see the vagina as a beautiful thing uh, when they are in the process of, of uh, you know, doctoring it. Then you do the right thing. Where'd you put him? Put him out there. In the truck. 
Did Shannon fight back at all? When did that? Why are you guys saying Paco is on? You know I'm fucking right, dude. Shut up. I didn't know what else to do. I know. I know. I didn't know what else to do. I was so scared. I know. W. It's like, no, I just did this, that, I just did that. What do I do? Right. You were in a tough spot. I mean, like, what can you do, right? It's like your body just kind of takes uh, over. Thanks, man, for being you. Fucking legend. He's crying because, not because he's a psychopath. He's crying out of uh, out of the feeling yeah, of. Yeah. Chris, I know they're gone, but they're still your babies, and you're still their dad. And you're one of them. That's all I want to say. Smiley He's crying face. because he feels like he got this off his chest. You don't. I promise you. That's it. It's Can relief. Bullshit segue. Just think about it this way. Just think about it this way. Like, if what he said was true, in the eyes of the fucking detectives, if what he said was true, which they know it's not, but if what he said was true, okay, dude, then he was keeping his composure for fucking Still two lying, days dude. after murdering his wife and witnessing his wife murder his two children? Get the fuck out of here. An honest person in that situation would immediately be like, my wife murdered my fucking kids, One and day. then I literally killed her in the process. Like, that's what a fucking normal human would do. I'm going to fucking prison. <laughs> yes. This is just fucking horrible. I've always said she was a terrible person, but I never thought I'd be a million years that could happen. She just lost it. Game of Frogs rise up his buff. Well, why did this happen to the two girls? He called the school to take out their enrollment for school the night he murdered them. That's like on the old news anytime so I No, no, not tonight. Whereabouts? The Shannon and the girls. Has he the first man. Okay, and where are the girls at? Here, here. Mm -hmm. So, how did you do this out? Yeah, your wife murdered your fucking babies, and then what happened? You hid the bodies, you fucking psycho? It's done. There's no way that you could literally fucking describe a situation in which, like, you don't know where the babies are, because the way you described it, like, you obviously know where the fucking kids are, because you hid them. Because, you know, you saw your wife murder the kids in the process. So, are you going to tell the fucking cops that you nice. broke your fucking children's arms in an effort to shove them through that fucking uh, tube or whatever to make sure that they uh, went in the oil tanker? Good luck explaining that as a non-murderer, dude. Seems like uh, going to be a really difficult thing to months. fucking describe. By the way, that's what, what I'm telling you is like actual fucking contents of this case. So, uh, yeah, good luck. You fucking sick freak, dude. Good job. So it sounds like, I mean, it feels like to me, now we know pretty well how to go get him. Is there anything else we need to know? Pepe laugh. He didn't fucking, he didn't think that through. In that moment, she laid a trap. He got it. He's thinking, how am I going to fucking describe to them where the babies are? Let my family down. Let my dad down. Let my mom. Sister. Nephew, nieces. Friends. Co-workers. Please check out the interrogation of Daniel Holt's law. A clearly innocent man put away for 236 years. The interrogation was a despicable display of corrupt police work. Everyone will agree this man is innocent after the video. Celeste, and you get her off of Celeste. Did you think um, about calling an ambulance? Come. I saw CG Larry in there blue and limp. Mm -hmm. I've never seen something like that in my life. I mean, she just like lay over, like nothing was, she wasn't moving at all, no gasp of breath.
first of all, I'm pretty sure, now correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure bodies don't go fucking blue and limp immediately after they're choked. So, like, his recalling of the events is, uh, of, of someone who let the fucking kids lie there for a while. Do they? I don't think they do. I, I, I'm, I think it's after, right? Rigor mortis is, what, 20 minutes? Do they immediately go limp? No, dude, really? Oh. Just totally just blue. After the baseline information of Chris's version of events is gathered, he is now locked into an alibi and timeline of affairs. Kind of a weird thing to know. I mean, I don't know. There might be people who are taking like, uh, I don't so know. They can use it against him. The tone of the interrogation then reverts like back from information gathering to a notice. confrontational nature. So Chris, you're doing this job for a long time. I know. I, uh... I know a lot of about psychology and as far as like what people are thinking and most parents will never even want to fathom that their kid, or kid is dead. Even if their kid's stiff, blue in bed, I mean stiff like been dead all night, they still call an ambulance to see if someone can- Fucking run. told you dude, if they were blue they'd be, uh, if they're blue and stiff they'd be dead all night. Survive their child. And they, when the ambulance get the, gets there and they're like, Gosh, their kid's been dead all night. Like, there's nothing we can do. And the parents are like, "What are you? Why are you not doing something? What are you talking about?" So that's what I'm. That's what we're used to. So I just. That's why I want you to explain to me like what was going on in your head and. The very last thought for what she was, what she did. It just took over. I just. I would hate for, Shanann to get a bad rap. If she didn't have anything to do with it, you know it's not fair. I know. Here. There is no technical term for this approach. Okay, guys. First of all, I don't know why he's not asking for a fucking lawyer at this point. What a what a freak. Very stupid. I don't think you I don't think the fucking kids would turn blue immediately. Like if he caught if he caught her in the act as he's saying, which he's lying obviously, that's not what happened. But if you caught her in the act, they wouldn't just be blue at that moment. It takes a while for that to happen. I think. Anyway, let's keep going. Yet it's a clear attempt by the detective to interconnect to the suspect's sense of morality, which is always under the assumption that they have any. Like enough bad stuff is happening, but like we need to stop the bad stuff from happening. So we're telling the truth. That is true. So you're good with the public knowing that Shanann killed her daughters? I did not hurt these girls. Are you okay with the public knowing that Shanann killed Yeah, it's good. I did not hurt these girls. I'm not sure what to do. Are you sure Shanann didn't catch you? No, my God, no. Don't get mad. But what it looks like is that you found a new life, and the only way to get that new life was to get rid of the old life. And I think Fucking that you killed the girls it. before their mom came home and then killed Shanann. And that's what we're kind of left. That's what we have to believe because. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, to her point, if I walked in and my kid was decapitated, I'd call an ambulance, mm -hmm. right? So Knowing there's no hope. It just, it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't add up. So either you're this monster who says, yeah. I just want this young, hot girlfriend, so I'm going to kill everyone and hope it works out, or something. So I think we're very, very close to the truth, but not quite there yet. So if you're not that monster, I'm not a monster. So what's going to happen when their cause of death comes back to you? Or the girl's not going to. Okay. You should. I'm 100% positive it's not going to come back to me. And what happens when a coroner looks and says she's your fingerprints on her neck? It's not going to be my fingerprints. Okay. What's it going to be? It's going to be Shanann. Why take their bodies out of the house and bury them? I was scared. I didn't know what else to do. Okay. Nothing, nothing, nothing was gonna, I, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. 
So I honestly didn't know what to do. Scared of what? Scared of what everything was going to look like. There's my two babies were gone, mm -hmm. and I, I just did that to my wife. And I was the only one left in the house. What do you expect is going to happen? Yeah. It did look bad, right? It looked, I mean, this was a nightmare. Yeah. Okay. Yesterday when you were talking, um, again, this is before we kind of got to this um, moment today, you mentioned that um, we were talking. Oh, well, here's one thing he could have done. Just fucking left, dude. I don't know. Not murder your fucking wife and children and just left with your new girlfriend and then been like, I'm divorcing you. Any number of different things he could have done. What a fucking absolute psychopathic demon. Like, straight up insanity. I don't know where they are. I don't know where they are. And then you said something. It costs zero dollars to not murder your family, dude. And, uh, whatever happened to him, this act of pure evil. What did that mean? This the evil that I saw when I walked behind him and she was on top of CC. And then I felt evil sprouted in the Okay. Just think if Shanann's friend was not such a so pain for Chris, he would have probably got away with this. No, I don't think so. I don't think he, he ever gets away with this. I think it's so bad. Like, so, so the thing is, chat, and I've watched enough cop shows to fucking know this. The first suspect is already, is always the, the immediate loved one. Like no matter what happens in cases like this, they immediately go after the, the loved one, like a lover. And especially when at least one fucking person in their vicinity says they had marital issues, it's done. It's a, it's a wrap. So it's not like they were operating on like a wild guess. Like the neighbor didn't have to actually say that. The neighbor didn't actually have to be like, yo, this person's sus as fuck. He probably murdered. Like they still would have done their due diligence and suspected the husband. So, you know. A lot more questions. Um, things are going to be different then. But if you're willing, we'd love to talk to you then, too. Now that we know what we know, um, we're going to, um, I need to check that you don't have any weapons on you or anything like that. Do you have any weapons on you? Okay. Um, we'll do that. We'll go to the bathroom. I'm not going to go in the stall with you, but I'm going to go with you. Um, and then we'll come right back here and we'll make a decision about how the rest of the night goes. All right, so you might stand it up so I can check. This interrogation was a true testimony of how mental fatigue can restructure an individual's cognitive rationale. Chris maintained his innocence even after the failed polygraph, and if he had kept that stance, he would have walked out of that police department as a free man for at least another night. Yet, after a prolonged state of isolation, anxiety, and fear, coupled with the cerebral influencing tactics of the interrogators, the alleviation of getting out of that situation was Most in that you... moment perceived as enough of a luxury to exchange his freedom for. Chris, come stand up for me. I'm gonna have you face that wall. Lift up your hands. I'm so I'm an addict. I'm like straight up addicted to this. <laughs> 